Hello out there. We're on the air. It's, it's Rink Moose, Moose Talk tonight. The beers are cold. The mics light up. And, and the, the boys, boys get, get set to fight. The gloves come off. Opinions get thrown. And someone slips on ice. One man howls. The other scowls. But the show must go on. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. And the best game you can name is the good old hockey game. You're an announcer with a long stick from time to time. With hockey flows. And more shots known. Pierre Maguire's life. Not John's a leap. Ovechkin's team. And Hoffman's crazy wife. When Carey slumps. And Bergevin stumps. Jerez on LaFontaine. Jokes aside, it's podcast time. And Rink Moose is the name. Oh, good hockey game is the best game you can name. Greetings and salutations. And welcome to the first ever episode 23 of the Rink Moose Hockey Podcast. A weekly episodic podcast where two good friends sit down and talk all things hockey and their implications in the fantasy hockey universe. I am one of your hosts, Nick Costu, and today I am proud to be joined by someone who might be a little skittish and scared tonight on this chilly Friday evening. Kyle Nice. What? Kyle, how are you doing today? I'm fine, Nick, but uh, why would I be skittish and scared? Because tonight your favorite Montreal Canadiens are visiting basically like the birthplace of Satan tonight. What? You know where that is? No. Columbus, Ohio. Why is that the birthplace of Satan? Every Habs fan should be scared. Scared. Devilishly scared who, of Columbus, Ohio. Who is Satan in this context? Well, I'm not saying there's a Satan. I'm just saying like it's like the it's like hell, man. They're it's good bad. Team. They're a good team. No, but no, it's just the, the history the Habs have there. Really? And you know where, what I'm alluding to, right? Hold on, hold on. Let me think. Is it something recent? Just to brief the audience on a little tale about a season or two ago, I was fighting for a for a week in fantasy. I needed to make an executive decision, a spot start on a Friday night. Oh my god! And, and I felt pretty deep. good about a certain goalie. <laughs> oh my god! Al Montoya. Oh against no! In Columbus <laughs> on a Friday night. <laughs> With the college kids going crazy in Columbus, Ohio, and the cannon rocking, I spot started Al Montoya of the Montreal Canadiens in Columbus, and I got shredded. Wow. Ten goals, I think. Ten or eleven. It was I think it was ten actually. You remember that night, don't they you? They really let him did they let him stay in there that They let whole him time? stay. They didn't want to use Carey because they had a game the following Saturday. Ugh, fuck, that's nasty. Mm-hmm. That is that's 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 poor form. I'm sorry. That's but I, I'm yeah. But you see where I'm going here, right? If if you're a Canadians fan, you got to remember that moment. Those I'm not demons. even a Canadians fan, and I vividly remember oh, Friday nights yeah. in Columbus just not going well. Well, I'm sure uh, I'm sure everyone's talking about it in the room beforehand. Claude Julien is going up there to the to the whiteboard and saying, "Boys, two years ago, ten nothing." Let's show these guys how we play. Like, I don't know, Nick. Come on. Well, they, they don't know. I don't, I don't, Al Montoya's yeah. texting the team, boys, please do this for me. No, no, no. No, no The no. team's diff- The team's changed. I mean, Al's not there anymore. <laughs> I, I don't even think Claude was a coach, and I think that was uh, oh. the other French-Canadian fella. Oh, yeah. His name yeah, escapes his name. me. Yeah, Michel yeah, Terrier. Yeah, no. yeah, it was a Terrier coach yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, yeah. It was a different time for the Canadians. Yeah, but, but what, uh, n- nonetheless, what's funny about that is that that one game might have ruined Al Montoya's entire stat line for the whole year. The whole year it ruined his oh, stat absolutely. line. Absolutely. <laughs> what? There's no co- recovering from that. No. Ten goals in the game. No. And 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 you're only, you're only getting 15 games a year because you're a, you're an NHL backup. So, yeah. I mean, and yeah, where I where mean, is he now? By the way, go figure. Nobody knows. He no, is probably he on an iceberg in Russia right now. Al Montoya. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I 
can't even see where he where he's playing right now. Could could be with Veska Vesa Toskla. Oh, fuck. and all and all those other backups. And Justin Pogi. Yeah, yeah, Whatever he played he for is. Edmonton last year, but that's, oh that's yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything new from uh, Pierre these days, Nick? Uh, well, I'll admit I have not listened too much to him right now of late, but I, I, I he has been saying quite a bit about your boy Pierre Luc Dubois of late. Oh, really? Columbus, On, uh... Columbus, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Columbus is uh, they, they've become pretty hot of late. Um, and, and he's been talking about Pierre Luke over Montreal radio. He was, he was really pumping his tires saying he's going to be a star. He, no. he is already a star. He's going to be a very big star in the next two to three years. Now, hold on one uh, second there, Nick. Yeah. It's funny. You should mention that. Cause the one Pierre Maguire clip I heard all week, it was yeah. on Montreal radio and he was talking about Columbus and, yeah. and wouldn't you know it? He, uh, he's like, yeah, that top line in Columbus, uh, uh, Cam Atkinson, uh, or Temi Panarin, and, uh, <laughs> and he just blanked, like just oh straight blanked, and and he yeah. he just moved on. He's like, yeah, and and the rest of the team, Seth Jones, he's he's good too. And then the the Montreal guy was like, you're thinking of Pierre Luc Dubois, Pierre, and he goes, oh yeah, yeah, Pierre, yeah, your right. own name, you fucking idiot. <laughs> right. You know what though? <laughs> You'll like this one. Did you hear the, that? The one th- I, I did not. I did oh, not. Okay. But uh, what I did like was uh, he called him the Mark Shifley of the Eastern Conference. He said he's the <sighs> best player in the Eastern Conference nobody knows about, which is what he calls Shifley in the West. Would you agree? I would not agree <laughs> on several accounts. Firstly, I think a lot of people know about Mark Shifley. And secondly... Um, I agree. Yeah, he. No one really talks about Dubois, but uh, I don't know. Like they got they. I don't, they don't really have a, a two two. He did. They don't play exactly the same way, and I don't know what he's saying about people don't talk about Mark Shifley. I mean, I think they they probably talk about him in quite a quite a lot. I guess. Out of everyone on Winnipeg, they probably talk about Shifley the most, and everyone says Winnipeg is one of the best teams. So I don't know. I think Shifley gets his, his fair share of attention. Yeah, maybe, maybe I think it's a little south of the border biased, right? I mean, I don't think Americans oh, yeah. are too, maybe. too tuned in. And with all due respect, I don't think they're too tuned in to the Winnipeg Jets. So uh, No, you're right. Like, we're talking from this Canadian perspective, but the, the mass is down south. They probably don't pay a lot of attention to Winnipeg. You're right. Sure, sure. But just quick quick word on Dubois. I th- Nick, I think he might, he's, he might be turning into one of my favorite players out there. Like, is the guy not just so solid all around in, in his game? Like, he can seemingly do everything. And uh, it's funny because I, re- I want to make this point is that when I saw him play at the World Juniors, and that's this is after he was drafted, so this is like the 2017 World Juniors. He was bad, Nick. He was a bad player in that tournament. Like, he got outshined by so many other players. He, I mean, he had a decent role, but he just, he looked out of place. And now look where he is. It's, it's crazy. It just sh- goes to show that that tournament doesn't mean everything. And, um, and man, this guy, fuck, I love this guy, man. He's like, to me, he's more like a, a, a Jamie Benn that, that plays center. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. He's, he's yeah, a, no. Uh, yeah, very multifaceted. Big, big size, but can skate very well, pass the puck, shoot the puck. Yeah. Um, very all-around talent. But he doesn't have that mean streak, though. Or at least right. we haven't really seen it yet. Like, like Ben will – Ben's the kind Ben's of leader where he'll, yeah. he'll just drop the gloves if his team is, is yeah. struggling. And I really admire that in a player. But uh, I think maybe Dubois has eh, maybe even a little bit higher hockey IQ. He just seems to know where people are going to be. Well, Ben's well, well about... hence the Shifley comparison. Yeah, fair. That that That's a fair point there. It's just, yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe they do play a, a pretty similar game. I just don't see Shifley as as yeah. physical as, as a Dubois in the, in the corners and all that. Sure. So, Nick, I want to... Other than that... Uh... He's he's Pierre. He's he's really just been 
you know, screwing around south of the border. He he did a game in Arizona. Well, that's really uh, fucking around, isn't it? Yeah, put, put, <laughs> put out a shout out for some bars in Arizona to watch hockey, which I wrote down. Oh, really? Just nice. I, I now have like bar and restaurant recommendations in Arizona, Buffalo, Washington, Columbus, uh, Montreal, all over the place just because Pierre. Wow, that's valuable information. Yeah. You could sell that on Kijiji, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. Nick, I want to talk about a quick trade. Looks like uh, Christmas has come early for you trade fanatics out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Minnesota and Carolina being uh, dance partners here. Uh, Nino Niederreiter for Victor Rask, long-lost brother of Tuka Rask in Boston. And uh, <laughs> man, oh man, D does this not seem like a pretty bad trade for Carolina? Like, I know Nino Niederreiter is not having his greatest offensive season. I think he's about a .5 point per game. But uh, if you look at the advanced stats and, and just knowing a little bit about the guy, he, he does a lot uh, in, in his two-way game. Like, he's, he's really responsible defensively, and he'll chip in. And he's good at shot generation and all that nonsense. And uh, apparently this guy, Victor Rask, he's just, he's just a schmuck out there. Like, he just doesn't do any of that. So people are pretty uh, people are pretty one sided on this deal. I, I say good on you for Carolina for making this uh, this move here in Minnesota. All I can say, Nick, is prepare for the fall because I I think this team is is due to to just start plummeting, man. Like fuck, their uh, like their goaltending is kind of getting shaky, and then this move, it's just like it's it's almost like it's almost time to hit the panic button there. Well, I, I do agree with you. I think when you look at it, just, you know, first observation, and this is certainly what I thought, I, I looked at the deal and I was like, hey, need a rider. That's a marquee name. Maybe yeah. he hasn't, you know, put up the marquee numbers, but the name's there. The name brand is there, given he's had at least one year where he put up a lot of a lot of points mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, has a pedigree of being a skilled shooter, skilled goal scorer. And that's exactly what Carolina needed. We, we were talking on the show like two months ago about the Carolina owner saying, we need, right. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully this is a guy they, they throw on the line with Aho. They get, they get a little, uh, you know, dynamic duo going there. And, and you definitely see where it's coming from in Carolina, especially when you had a guy like Rask who basically turned invisible uh, there in Carolina. Yeah. But, but, but the inside scoop in this and shout out to Pierre yet again, oh boy. um, Paul, Paul Fenton. Do you know who Paul Fenton is? Paul Fenton. Who's Paul Fenton? <laughs> Paul Fenton, the GM of the Minnesota wild. Oh, that guy. Mm -hmm. He's a random and name, I isn't he? Yeah, he's a, he's a random guy who's got a who's got a connection here with these players because uh, apparently he's got he's got an affinity for for Swedish born talent, and uh, he he thinks need uh, with his other acquisition, Pontus Auberg, in, in a deal he made with uh, with Anaheim earlier in the week, and and he's of the opinion those two Swedes can add more to his squad in terms of scoring than a guy like Niederreiter who's kind of been skittish and, and very streaky mm. in, in the last year or so. Fair enough. Well, Nick, I'd love to sit and chat about uh, minor deals all day, but <laughs> we've got bigger and better things to talk about, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Well, as we know, the All-Star Game is coming up pretty darn soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, some kind of strange all-star roster uh roster moves here just in terms of how they're shaped up here so there's a there's a couple of guys that i got on my list that that probably shouldn't be there and maybe some guys that probably should so i'm going to go through mm -hmm. a couple here that i i don't think should be there nick jimmy howard yes come on jimmy howard <laughs> what does he have like an 888 yeah come on so jimmy howard's there and not Freddie Anderson. Not for oh my god. Right? So yeah, the guy who point. should be getting the Vezina is bumped because of Jimmy Howard. Now if you wanted to take a fucking Detroit guy, like like I know they always say like everyone has to be represented and I get that. Mm -hmm. But like take Dylan Larkin. Like why mm -hmm. why don't you just take Dylan Larkin? Bite the bullet. Take Dylan Larkin. 
Right, but then he's got to take over for one of the forwards, I right? Yes. So. And so that that's the problem with this whole with this whole system. I know you're going to get into your other names, but broad, broadly speaking, the whole point that the, they still need each team still needs to have what seven forwards, two D, two goalies. I, I know Elliot Friedman. He kind of threw out the opinion: Hey, just screw the position thing. How about you just vote in, you know, Everybody. eleven guys, uh. regardless what they play. And and that's the team. Well, and because of this position eligibility thing, you got guys like Keith Yandel there and Jimmy Howard, and and, and not you know a Dylan Larkin. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. But it's, I like it's, it. And and in an all, let's face it, in an all star game, positions don't matter anyways. It's three on three. No, exactly. They're playing. They're playing shinny out there, right? It's shinny, basically. Yeah. No, I I like that idea. Just because, I mean, we, we can get the guys who deserve to be there to be there. And the guys who, let's, fr- let's face it, the fans who most want to see there will be there. So mm. that, that's, that's part of it. But another one is like, you know, they, they left Andre Vasilevsky off the initial roster. He's only going because Price can't go. Mm. Like, come on. They, they had, yeah. they had uh, Jimmy Howard over Vasilevsky for a time. That, that's pretty bad. And now, obviously, we know Montreal is not even represented at all at the at the games. And now. and Carey Price were your goalies. It's pretty pathetic. Yeah. Well, w- wait. What what does that mean? Well, I'm just saying. Ideally, you'd have Vasilevsky and Freddie. I, I right? guess. I guess. It's, again, it's just weird. It's just clunky. And then uh, another one. This one out of the central. I mean, I'm all. I, I like the guy, but Miro Heiskanen, out of Dallas. There's no better guys out there. To take along yeah, for this for this that journey, hurts. that hurts. And uh, hurts. another hurts one, uh, Lungfist out of the Metro. I, How's he voted in? I, He's barely getting games. That guy Georgiev is taking all his starts. Is he really? Yes, for, get, he's only playing half the games there. I think we're running into a Jimmy Howard situation here, where it's yeah, like, again in the Metro, you got another Jimmy Howard situation. And then yeah. I agree, Huskin and yeah, there's a way better D in the Central. They they pick Roman Yossi, right? So exactly. Just off the top of your head, who who would be a better representative from Nashville? No, from uh, yeah. Wow, that's no. They've already got Rene. I'm just saying any defenseman in general, right? Like the only two defensemen on that team are Yossi and Heiskanen. Oh yeah. So if you yeah. take out Heiskanen, if you take out Heiskanen, there's probably a handful of names in the central you can toss in to replace him, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, well, Winnipeg's got some injuries back there, but, uh, you know, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, the Central's tough for defensemen because a lot of guys are getting old or, or just getting injured. And, and they can't take Tyson Berry because they already have the three Colorado guys. And then uh, I guess Subban's still – is he still out? He's he's out. He missed a lot of time, though, so it would look kind of weird putting him yeah. in. Yeah, and then Bufflin's out. So I don't know. Like, there's a lot of guys out there that are that are kind of, kind of out there. So I, I, I guess I understand Yossi to a degree. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, it's 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 complicated when you need to include a guy from every team, right? It there is. needs to be a representative from every team because that's the case here, right? With they don't want to put Ben or Sagan there, mm. the way they were called out by the mm-hmm. by the yeah. owner. Looks, the other looks, week, yeah, looks a little bad. So they toss in the they toss in the defenseman Heiskanen. So I don't know Rookie where you defense. stand on that. Do you <laughs> do you like the whole having a guy from each each team there? Well, it's it's a really tough scenario, Nick. Because I mean, look at a team like Toronto. They could have so many guys represented. Here's where we get into a problem. You have a market like Toronto, who's probably going to get a lot of the voters. So if if the Toronto voters take over and they just start going, oh Tavares, Marner, Nylander, Matthews, uh, Riley, Freddie, like you can't just have all those Toronto guys. Like I I kind of understand where they're coming from in that standpoint. So I mean I get it, and I I think this is probably yeah, the, the I, way it works I, I most. Agree. But at the end of the day, like you got some serious talent sitting staying at home, which is AKA Braden Point. Morgan Riley, Mitch Marner. Oh, these are some marquee players, Nick, and it, and it uh, it's probably not right. But then again, 
there's another aspect we have to take on this, and I, I'm I'm going to get into this a little bit. Uh, do these guys even want to go to this thing? Like, I don't know what what has the All Star Game become in your mind? Because I mean, we see Ovi skipping it. I, I'm sure like these guys are going to this game, and they're th- oh fuck, what the f- fuck happened now? Yeah, it was it was it was stuttering. It was going in and out, in and out, and then it just got better. Fuck. Where did we leave off? Uh well you seemed to be going off on a rant there, which was fine. I All just right. you were cutting in and out, in and out. I couldn't tell if you were pausing for me to speak, so that's why I texted no, you. No, the the thing just it said disconnected for a sec, but I said disconnecting. Oh. Oh, okay. Fuck, I'm but, getting but pissed you, you off. Seemed, I, I was worried you were going to ask me to speak during that stretch, which you no, didn't. No, no, so no. If you, you want to continue on your rant, then go. You said All something right. about point. And Fuck. then what I thought of the all-star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm like, the, the internet's ruining my flow. I'm pissed off. Oh, yeah. Fuck. All right. Braden Point. <laughs> He's a good player. Morgan, Ro- Morgan Riley's a good player. Mitch Marner. But Nick, I want to get into another a whole nother topic with you here. I mean, do these guys even want to be at this game? Like, what is the All Star Game in, in in 2019, Nick? I, I'm I'm sure a lot of these star players are very jealous of their teammates who get to sit on a beach for a few days and just relax for that weekend. And and then they have the some some guys have the bye week coming up right after. So. Fuck, I'd love to get a start to my holiday. Why do I want to put myself on a on a circus like this? Like uh I I'm not I'm sure Cros- Crosby knows this very well. He skipped many all stars in his years. Oh my foot hurts, my leg hurts, my eye hurts. He'll get he'll say anything to get out of this fucking all star game. I mean, uh what what is the all star game become? And the big question here is should there even be an all star game anymore? Well, I, I think we this this rhetoric has kind of been been talked about the past several years. I think that's why they changed the format. It's three on three now. I think that's why they've made a few adjustments to the skills competition night, stuff like that. I mean I, I think the God and, and I lo- fuck. What do you no, Nick, the the whole thing just cut out for that whole fucking thing. I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Is this your internet or is it mine? I can't tell. It's definitely mine because I'm looking at my shit and it's going in and out. It's fucking bullshit. Hmm. So All what right, are you, you going to do? Try again. Fuck me. Hmm. This is a first. Yeah, this is fucking terrible. Terrible. Usually, usually I'm dropping the ball. Yeah. Do you have your little Gatorade bottle there? Yeah, you can hear that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, At this boy. rate, we, we'll be up all night, Nick. I'm telling oh, you. Oh, this is terrible. And this is going to be the worst editing job <laughs> you've ever seen. Oh, this is terrible. Yeah, it's awful. I feel bad for you right now. I, I'm looking at zero bars on my Wi-Fi thing, and I, like, I don't even know oh, how we're talking. Oh, God. Right I don't even know how that we're is talking. awful. I'm you need sitting to find, right beside uh, the router, literally. You need to find it to start going to now fuck <laughs> pissed this is awful no okay i think i figured it out i think it, hold on give me one second internet or anything you got you got something better hold on Hello? Yep. Fucking Christ. All right, let's see if this works. I think it should be good now. Okay. All right. So the last thing I said was... What do I think of the All-Star game? <clears throat> yeah. So I should start? Yeah. Pissed. See, now you're going to be all mad and people are going to be like, what happened to him? <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> What's with the hot take out of nowhere? <laughs> yeah, things got a little tuned up there. <laughs> well, 
Well, no, I'll tell you what, Kyle. I, uh, I, I think the rhetoric has been out there about what to do with this weekend. It's kind of been a fiasco the last several years, and I think that's why the NHL has been working to kind of change the format. You saw that with the three-on-three they've implemented, which I've been a fan of. I Personally, I think that's more exciting than a five-on-five game where guys don't want to hit each other and just aren't trying. Um, I, I also, you know, the skills competition, they've made a few little adjustments there, but I still don't think that's very successful. I think the game is a definitely more of a draw for the fans. Um, but again, with, with what it means, I think, I don't know. I, I think it's subjective. I think for certain guys, like a, like a Matt Barzell, you know, it means something like, like that's that a, guy. he's an all-star. That's a first time all-star Sebastian Ajo. That means something like that's an honor, regardless what you make of the game itself it, to be called an all-star is still an achievement. And, and I think these guys are, are proud of that. Shifley, believe it or not, this is his first all-star nod. So, no. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so g- good for guys like that. What the hell? Yeah. What a snub that must've been. That's awful strange. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And then, you know, I, I, do they want to be there? Yeah. Those guys, those guys do the older guys. Hey, you know, it's, it's in San Jose this year, which is nice. So they'll still get to go to a beach. So, uh, Hey, like, I don't, I don't see what the big deal is here. I, I just think what's more important is that the NHL is doing their part and making it more of a, a draw for viewership. And, mm-hmm. and I think the three on three is doing that. The only thing I'd like them to add and I know they've done this with like the money that they give out. I think they give out like, you know, what is it, a million dollars to the game to the to the winning team? Yeah, yeah. Instead of that, I, I'd like the the winner to get home ice in the Stanley Cup final. How would that uh, How would that work? Like West versus East? You mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So so if it's a West or an East team, they they get home ice, and, and it's guaranteed to be a East versus West team because that's the way the bracket works mm. there in that little mini three on three tournament they do. Mm. So the winner of that game gets home ice wow. in, in the state final. So and, and that's something, some yeah, and, and that's something they they implemented in baseball. It's worked great. Baseball huh. all star games I maintain are the best all star games of any sport. Period. And wow. and a big reason of that is there's more of a player incentive to actually go play for your team, try and win the game. Wow. Home ice. Yeah. You like that? That could be. Yeah. I mean, that's as long as, I mean, it, it's a, uh, it, it works as long as your team has maybe you think a shot to, to get there, but you know, I'm, I'm sure they're, if, if, if that's the case, they're going to be saying, yeah, go yeah, give it a little bit more effort than you usually would for sure. I think that's, that's an interesting idea, Nick. That that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I like that. Keep the money portion, but all because you know that that counts for something. But uh, but yeah, add the home ice thing, and and I think uh, I think you'll see guys going a little harder because because mm. as much as we love three on three, the guys still aren't aren't going real hard. I mean, let's face it. There's a lot of just odd man rushes, guys falling for no reason. You know, no yeah. no real poke checks, no no kind of hits at all. You know. Yeah, the I mean the crin the three on three is pretty good. The cringiest thing for me is that uh, that shootout challenge. You know what and I'm skills. talking about? Where where guys just no, it's just the regular shootout one where guys just come down and you uh, just see guys yeah. just shooting. Like you know, yeah. like what the fuck are you doing? I think yeah. I saw last year, and I think the only guy who was trying shit was like Subban or maybe Burns. The other all the rest of the guys were just firing wrist shots from the from the circles i'm like come on you gotta be kidding me now that's just yeah. that's just a little bit silly here you're not even trying now do they still do the skill breakaway though where they get to pull off a move oh i'm sure they will i'm sure okay. they will okay. and you saw I, you I saw like the that funny yeah. jeff skinner uh highlight there with him at practice with the doing the yeah. ballerina spin yeah oh that, that I, yeah. I hope we see something like that but yeah. and i and i do and i do like the the fastest skater that that's a fun one. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I yeah. but I would like when if the guys actually lined up together at the same time and actually like raced each other, so they could slash each other. Exactly. And instead of just like <clears throat> starting them at opposite set ends of the ice, where it's a little like, yeah, you can't really see them. That's just me. Yeah. No, I get that. Now, some guy um, on Twitter, yeah. I forget who it was, but it, it was like one of the one of the big sports guys. He suggested this. Now, this is kind of out there. Now, mind you, but 
I didn't mind it. He said, uh, during the World Juniors, the NHL stops play. This allows the uh, best on best tournament, and uh, players get their rest period, and the NHL doesn't have to compete for viewership and no All Star game. So cut cut the All Star game, cut the NHL while the juniors are on, make it a best on best, and then that's your that's your bye week or week or two, and then uh, just go from there. And th- this was gaining some traction, believe it or not, on Twitter, but. Uh, I mean, we have to kind of remember here, and this is, this is just the devil's advocate, is the reason, a big reason why they do the All-Star game is to gain fans that aren't yet hockey fans, is to attract people to the sport in, in any way possible. So I, I think this, this plan has a lot of holes. I just thought it was, a, it was an interesting concept. Yeah, no, that there's merit to that. Um Again, I don't know, again, with the whole competing for viewership thing, maybe that's a thing in Canada. I don't know if in the States, Americans are as tuned into the World Juniors. Maybe they want to keep watching their NHL. Yeah. So I don't know how much of that plays into that. Also with Europe, I don't know how, how much of those those European markets are, are tuning into the World Juniors. So I can't speak for everyone. I can only speak for Canada there. I definitely think there's merit from that standpoint. Um. But yeah, I'll agree. Like us Canadians, it's it's kind of hard to keep. Hello. Yeah. What? You connect? Fuck. You left off a keep. For us Canadians, it's hard to keep. Keep. Keep what? I don't know. I don't know. You said it. You asked me a question. Yeah. No. You asked me. No. So it was. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, about the, uh, the the Twitter thing. The uh, the guy he says cancel the NHL while the juniors are on, and he's like, "Oh, I get that for the American viewers, but as for us Canadians, it's hard to keep." And then you tailed you you cut off. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, for us Canadians, it's 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 very difficult to keep up with what's going on both in the World Juniors and the NHL. So I, I definitely see the merit of that opinion from a Canadian standpoint. I just don't know how much it you know transcends into how Europeans or Americans feel about the whole viewership competing thing between the World Juniors and the NHL. Mm. Now, Nick, speaking of hatred, hatred, the Leafs fans hate. Jake Gardner. Mm. This is sad, Nick. Jake Gardner, he's a nice guy, isn't he? He seems like a good guy. So he's been wearing the goat horns for quite a long time now. I mean, it's it's been it's been a few years since people have pegged him the mistake maker of the Toronto Maple Leafs blue line. And uh we're talking about one play in particular here. At least th- this is what draws my mind uh away from the uh the crowd is that that piss poor effort against Colorado where what's his name Carl Soderberg or whoever it was comes down on him and just simply out muscles Jake Gardner for the puck right in front of the net and uh, and scores a goal now the, obviously this caused just an awful ruckus in uh, in the Scotiabank Center there and they were all booing the poor man our uh, our valiant defenseman but Nick, I, I still think uh, Jake Gardner is a valuable defenseman for the team and is going to be very hard to replace when he does leave. And this is backed up by the uh, the advanced stats community. The guy's a good player. I, I'm not sure we should be booing him, and I, I'm not sure what that really does for him. Now I, I get it's you know it's in the fans' natural. It's the it's the it's the way of the fan, you know, like. You bought the ticket, you spent a lot of money, the guy screws up. I have a right to boo. But at the same time, you're not really helping your squad here and you're not helping the guy's confidence. What do you think of Jake Gardner and his blunder and his uh his mistrust from the fans? Yeah, I mean, it's a heat of the moment thing, right? You're at the game. It's a it, the team's going through adversity adversity right now as all yeah. Leaf fans know. You're coming off a loss to Boston. 
Um, you know, you're, you just gave up the lead against a Colorado team on a Jake Gardner play, which is very, you know, inexcusable. Lot, lots of flashbacks to game seven there versus Boston. So, it, hey, if I'm a fan in that game, I'm booing him too. Ooh. Because like that, that's just your that's the Come that's on. just your instincts. That's your instinct. You'd stand you're at, up in the middle of the everybody and you'd just boo the guy. This well, he poor fucked up. Man. He fucked up. <laughs> that's a bad play. You can't you can't do that in the NHL. <clears throat> it's a bad play, sure. It's a terrible play. It's just a one on one play where the guy out muscles you, out tries harder than you on a power play. He's playing harder minutes than you. He should be out of gas, not you. And you just let him take the puck off you. Just inexcusable. And so if you're the fans, you're in the heat of the moment. You have the right to boo, and you should boo if you want to. I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying if you want to, you got all the right to. Especially if you're paying, you know, 200 bucks to sit in the in the 300 level there. Oof. But should but, you, though? Should you? Should you? Yeah. Oh, fuck. I mean... This guy's not a baby, Kyle. I mean, you think it's going to really affect his psyche? He I almost mean, cried. He's, he's he's a grown he's a grown man. Time heals all wounds. No, it's gonna it's gonna hurt you in the moment, but you get over it, right? I don't know, Nick. Like, like we just saw him playing Tampa. He looked just fine to me. Doesn't look like he's 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 carrying this with him. Like he, like he's, his feelings are hurt. I guess, but like the fuck, the, he even saw the media after the game and looked totally fine. Mm. He wasn't crying. I heard he was crying. Like I listened to a certain podcast that said, "Yeah, he looked like he was about to cry after the game." But let me let me okay. ask you this. Let me ask you this. The, these are prideful guys. These these guys grew up like stars in wherever they came from. Do you think that this guy is going to be more motivated? to try to work his ass off for this team and, and do anything it takes to win this Stanley Cup. Let's win a couple rounds in the playoffs. If, if, if he knows he doesn't have the backing of the fans. I know it's a professional sport and all, but you have to get down to the human nature. This guy, I mean, the fans have not respected this guy for a long time now. Let's be honest. He, he's the scapegoat for, for many of our problems, Well, a.k.a. Boston last year. And, and many other situations. It just it do, it doesn't seem like a healthy relationship between Jake Gardner and the fans. And I think uh, it, it could come back to bite us when when we really need him later on in in, uh, in the season here. Well, if I'm come on, let's face it. If if you're if you're him, you're getting booed. The fans are kind of disrespecting you. Wouldn't that motivate you to get your game together and, and to kind of push yourself? Because personally, that's how I would feel. The fans are loving Morgan Riley. They're loving Travis Dermott. I, I want to be treated like them, so I'm going to play like them. Shouldn't shouldn't that be the rationale that that you embrace if you're Jake Gardner? It should be in a in a perfect world, I think yes. But at the same time, like there there must be some part of him that says like I, I've I've worked my ass off in this city for many many years, and uh, I don't feel like I get Has treated he? well. Has enough. he? Because you blew our season last year. Well, that's... Is that, is that working your ass off? I don't uh... see you getting all-star nods. I don't see you getting over 50 points every season. Well, I don't think he got 50 last off. year. He got 50 last year. He's not doing that every year. Well. I'm just saying, if you want to be as respected in the city as the Marners or the Matthews or the Tavares or the Riley or the Freddie then play like those guys, okay? Don't just expect us to treat you like a god when when you're when you're mucking up game 7 <laughs> and you're making you're 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 fumbling the puck around like on that play with Soderberg. Please, don't don't go there. I just feel bad for the guy. And I just don't think this is going to help. We I think still, you're being a little soft. We still need we the the bottom line is we need this guy. Do we? We need this guy. Like this year, this year, this year we we might not have him next year. We we won't have him next year. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna have him next year. But if we want to make some noise, we need Jake Gardner playing Jake Gardner's best game. Sure. And this is why I'm worried because we're we're going down a slippery slope here. This isn't the first time something like this has happened. I can't imagine the Twitter abuse and the online abuse that he got from last fucking playoffs. Like the guy's probably like a, a a confidence mess right now, 
And uh, it just doesn't bode well for for the blue line that's already a, a struggling blue line, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I, I Again, I, I think it's how you see this, right? You, if you want to yeah. take my opinion, my standpoint, and think it's going to help him and think it's going to usher him to play harder so he can get that respect, then fine. But but if you're in, you you seem to be in the opinion where you know this guy can't take a lot of adversity. He's getting beat into the ground right now, and and there's no looking up from here. Mm. So I, I I think only time will tell which way he responds here. Yes, if, if you know, d- does he does his play get better or does it does it not? Indeed. And 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 that'll and 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 if it doesn't, then we can point at the situation and be like, man, Leafs fans suck. Like this is this is like we're we're hurting our own players. We're hurting our own chances of winning cups. Mm-hmm. So, I I think I think time will tell here. Indeed, and th- there's an interesting storyline developing with with this recent Leaf struggle. Is that, I mean, in in the beginning of the year, you had a Leafs team who they didn't want to change anything right away. They wanted to see what they had on defense. They wanted to let's let the year play out. And later on, maybe midway through the year, let's see how our defense has, has done. And then we'll make a decision whether we want to make a move at the deadline or if we want to just stand pat. I think what we've realized, now correct me if, if you don't agree, but with this recent stretch and how the year has gone, that yes, it's become 100% apparent to everybody that this team needs help on defense. And I think what we've seen recently has just solidified the fact that they are going to make a deadline deal. I can almost guarantee this at this point because I mean, we we've seen the weakness just, just shoved in our face when, when Freddie went down and you saw what, what this team could do without him, it became very apparent. And um, just based on what I'm hearing, there's word that the first rounder is in play for, for a, for a defenseman here as well as a talented young forward, a.k.a. Uh, along the lines of uh, Jeremy Bracco and uh, maybe even Andreas Janssen, that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, I just I just think that uh, after all we've seen, there, there's a deal coming, Nick, and, and it just – I hope they get it right, and I, I don't know who's coming, but uh, it's going to be interesting the next six weeks because the trade deadline is coming up quick, I think the February 25th. The Leafs will add a new defenseman. I'm calling it right now. Yeah, and and I don't think that's too bold a statement. I mean, I think you have to. Dubis for too long has just sat down and said his defense is good enough. Yeah. Where clearly that's been wrong, and and it and it has not been the case. Come come April and, and when it really matters. And uh, I I think finally you know with that first round leak coming out. The Leafs, they're they're often not very transparent about what they're willing to trade away and 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 you know what's on the market, but it, but in this case with the Leafs of all teams letting this leak, I, I think it says a lot about you know how committed Dubas is to making a deal here, even if it has to come the expense of a first rounder or a marquee young talent like a Janssen or a Kapanen. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of who it is. And 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 if you ask me, this is this is the big moment for Kyle Dubas. We we yes. talked about it in the Nylander deal, yeah. Where either of us could have done that negotiation. <laughs> he, so on. far, Dubas has not proved anything in my mind. Come on, he this got Tavares. Will... He got Tavares. Come on, that's something. <laughs> that's something. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> sure. Come but on. still, this this will this will be big. This will be a defining moment in his legacy when you oh, look huge. back at the legacy of Kyle Dubas with the Leafs. This this defenseman he gets, what he has to give up, how he does in the playoffs, uh, it, it's going to be critical. And and there's a lot of places you can go with kind of hypothesizing who you think they're going to acquire. Mm. Almost so much so, it's very hard to go down that road in a negotiation. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm kind of just sitting back, letting the kid do his work, and, and see what he comes up with. It's it's becoming pretty apparent, Nick. They're they're gonna make a run this year. Like this is this is a year to do it because of all the the cap stuff. So yeah, the expiring contracts, and uh, I think almost certainly with Gardner there, Kapan in there, yeah. those guys they might not be there a long time. So I, I'd am... agree. I'm getting fired up, Nick. As as the weeks press on, it's it's going to be more and more interesting. 
And uh, a, a team I keep hearing out on the on the rumor mill is L.A. Like, don't mm. they just make such a, a good dance partner with Toronto? They got some good I think yeah. out there. I, I think L.A. is a good one. We've talked about Muzzin and already yep. and Alec Martinez. Yep. Um, but I also like Vancouver. I think that's a good trade partner. I think mm. uh, an Edler would be yeah, nice. Sure. Um, sure. Or that other defenseman they've got out there. Um, it depends where Vancouver is, is in the standings yeah. later on. I mean, right, if they're right, sniffing yeah. around, I don't know if they part with uh, with an Edler. But yeah. uh, it, it's very po- – if they plummet, very, very possible. I, I could yeah. totally him, see Him it. or like a Tanev, you know, sure. or both. Sure. Wouldn't yeah. that be something? Anyone, anyone that we that could fit into a top four role here, like uh, on the right side, on the right yes. side, yes, yes, particularly, yeah. But uh, to me personally, I, I'm looking at Muzzin. I'd love, I'd love a Muzzin, Nick. I'd love a Muzzin. <laughs> so you, I you're know, sold I know now. you would as well. I know. Well, you would I, as well. I had to sell him on you. <laughs> yes, yes. But I heard his name in the in the past couple days, and uh, it just seems like. A very intriguing fit here. Hmm. And I'd be willing to go with a first rounder and a Jeremy Bracco for a, for a Jake Muzzin. And I think it makes sense for LA. Like that, that, that's a first round. Yeah. I mean, and that's a decent, uh, that's a, a good prospect, like a, not a, not a superstar prospect, but a good prospect. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they don't have too many prospects left in that pool. Cause the reality is a lot of them are in the NHL now. Mm-hmm. But I think it's yeah. fair to say the Marlies of the last few years here, they've had their success. They've, they've won their Calder Cups. And, and I think it's about time they kind of pass the torch here and, and let the Leafs have their success, whether it be by letting guys play in the NHL like happened in Janssen or by, you know, letting their talent be traded away to other markets so that we can get current NHL talent that can help us in these playoff runs. Because yes. there's going to, you know, regardless how you see it, the next four to five years, this is the window. So if there's a time to make a run, it's right now. Boy, oh boy. Now, Nick, there's a pretty cool game on the other night. Tampa Bay, Toronto. Clash mm-hmm. of the Titans, version two. I think I think version two. Now, this was <laughs> this was quite the game. And, and I'll be honest, I only caught the last period or so, but it, it became super apparent. And that's pretty much, that was pretty much the climax of the game. Eh? That, that last five minutes, it was unbelievable. What, what I saw was Freddie Anderson. As, as soon as it was 3-2, Freddie Anderson basically put on his, his cape and, and his, his tight suit. And he was just like, <laughs> I'm just going to steal this game. He was unbelievable. And I'll, I'll let me say this about Tampa Bay: the way they play their six on five with the goalie pulled, you like is that, like eh? almost the best I've ever seen. Because usually <laughs> six on fives are a little bit messy. You know, it's almost like maybe they don't practice this enough. Nah. But it looked unbelievable. You had Hedman at the top, and you had Trigger Stamkos on the left, and Trigger Kucherov on the right, and they're just firing. It was unbelievable. I was they were just firing left, right, and center. Nick, I was yeah. like, something's going in here. And then that that stupid uh, empty net goal kind of ruined everything. Yeah, yeah, it, it, a, it a just deflated, finish. deflated the whole game. But yeah, but what like you know, what are you gonna do, right? It's it is what it is. Toronto won the game and all that, but man, that was a f- electric finish, and I was so impressed with what w- the movement that Tampa Bay had on that on that six on five, like. Man, oh man, those three at the top umbrella portion, fuck, they they looked amazing there. Well, and, and not to mention you got you got point doing the hard work, getting in the corners, retrieving yeah. the pucks, holding yeah. off players. There was that one play, even Kutrov, where he he lifted, I think it was what Hyman's stick to yes. recover the puck and kept yes. the puck in the zone. Unbelievable. Like little 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 plays like that. It was it was it was remarkable. Unbelievable. Um, but again, I, I think it almost got a little too predictable. I think in that whole kind of three minute, last three minutes of the game sequence, I think Stamkos must have had like five shots yeah. from that from that left circle there, and and Freddie was just there every single time. Yeah. So he was as, as good as the, very well. As, yeah, as good as the puck movement was, and and the way they were able to spread spread the puck around, it got a little predictable, and I and I think that's why Freddie was on his game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, shitty that it ended that way. Because, you know, Tampa, you know, them being them are just going to go, 
oh, well, they didn't win fairly, the, you know, controversy at the end of the game. Yeah. So as, as much as the season series is 1-1 now with two to go, um, you know Tampa's going to look back at that one. And, 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 you know, to me, it doesn't sound like they're giving the Leafs too much credit. And mm-hmm. in the post-game conference, uh, John Cooper basically just said, hey, that, that was our game to win. We could have won. Any either team could have won that game, and it was just it was just chance against chance, and a puck was going to go in eventually, and the and the Leafs had had just a few more pucks go in. So, yeah, um, yeah, it should be exciting. Next game not till March 11th, I think. So quite quite the wait. Yeah, and interestingly, if we look back at the season series, Vasilevsky really stole that first game, and I, I think Anderson really stole this game. So it's it's mm-hmm. been a ba- battle of the goalies really for for these two games versus uh, these two teams. But uh, one thing, I know, another thing I want to highlight here, Nick, is in Toronto's recent struggles, we've seen Marner and Tavares go through a, actually a really good stretch. Like through this losing stretch, they've been really really good. And Marner in particular, I think he's got like just a crazy amount of goals in the last 12 games. Uh, my question to you, Nick, is what uh, what is up with Austin Matthews? I know he's had, uh, I think it's about 10 games now without a goal. Uh, and I've heard some, you know, murmurs on the on the radio and such. Is is this possibly the, the shoulder nagging him a little bit, or is it just a natural snake bitten? Is it uh, some something to do with Nylander coming back and maybe he's looking for Nylander too much? What what's going on with this guy? Yeah, he's he's looking a little disconnected from the game at certain points. That, yeah. That's what I'm kind of. That's the feel I'm getting. His line mates have kind of been flip flopping. You know, you had you've you've had Hyman now introduced to the line. It's been a while since they played, not since last season. So that's something to get adjusted to. Willie's been on and off that line, so it's either been him or Kapanen. Uh He's been taken off the first PP, so you mm. can't forget about that. No. Um, a, a number of factors. I mean, who who who's to say which factor it is? There's so many ways you can read into this. But if you're asking if I'm concerned, absolutely not. I mean, this guy's shown he's a stud. The second he he can be streaky. The second he scores one, because he's going to score one eventually, could be tonight in Florida. Um, you know, he, he just keeps scoring. So yeah. I, I'm not too concerned. It's not like it was like Nylander struggles earlier where he's just not getting chances. I think he is getting chances. It's just a matter of that puck going in the net. And right now it's not happening. So, I mean, did you, you saw that one play with Vasilevsky last night, right? Where he straight up shot it at him. Yeah, it, it, it was such a by. hard shot. It went behind his glove and Vasilevsky being the octopus he is just caught it somehow, right? Behind him. Yeah. Guys so, uh, yeah, I mean, little things like that. I mean, great play, great shot, just some bad luck. So I- I'm not too concerned. Um, yeah, but, you know, one last thing on Tampa Leafs. Would you would you not agree that the, you'd like this matchup in the first round if you're the Leafs more than the Boston matchup? Ah, oh, Nick, Nick. I know Nick. we've been debating this, Leaf fans, for the past couple of years, but yeah. to me... It just looks like two teams with the same style. It's just a track meet. It's just chance against chance, speed against speed. And and it's about a 50-50 chance, flip a coin. Whereas Boston, it's it's like they're in your head. Uh, I see I see both sides. I think Tampa's probably the better team out of the two. But again, t- Boston with the psychological factors and they just don't match up well. But... I don't know. I I have to. I have to. My logical brain is telling me I'd rather face Boston because, I mean, Tampa Bay is just so deep and just so scary. They got a better goaltender. They got. They're just. They're just a better team, Nick. I'm. I'm. I think Tampa Bay has been amazing for a couple of years now, and they haven't really gotten where they should get, which is the finals. And I think they're just hungry as they've ever been, and I, I'm worried. I'd be very, very worried about them. So I'm, I'm gonna go. Let, let's expel the demons from Boston this year. I mean, it can't go three losses in the last ten years. Come on, I think this is the year. This is the year that Toronto finally gets by Boston. I'll take, I'll take the Bruins. All right, I'm, I'm shocked to hear that. But yeah, if I'm the Leafs, if I'm the Leafs, I'm, I'm letting Montreal take them. You know, you guys play two, three. I'll take the wild card and I'll take Tampa or uh, or Washington. Br- bring them on. Hey, well, let, let me give you let me give you a quick hypothetical here, Nick. 
say for whatever godlike reason that Montreal or whoever does pass Toronto, okay? And Toronto's in, in the first wild card spot and they face sure. Washington. Is sure. that better than either of Boston or Tampa Bay? Washington. I mean, you almost beat them a couple of years ago. You took, I, them, you took them to six games. I think and, it's the best scenario. Well, yeah. I mean, I know they won the cup last year. We're, we're literally talking <laughs> against beating the defending champion. Yeah. But how, of, how often does a team win back-to-back, right? Yeah. I mean, mo- most, most likely the team's tired because they just played into late June. And, and I don't see them down to do that yet again. I think Ovi's kind of pleased with, with how things <laughs> went. And, is, He's is, you know, He's he doesn't good. have the same hunger as last year. <laughs> If I'm the Leafs, I'll happily take that matchup. But again, yeah. you, you don't know if you'll get it because if you're in the second wild card, I mean, yeah, second wild card, you'll get the first Metro team, but there isn't much of a gap between being the second wild card or the first wild card. Right? Fair, fair. So you don't want to drop so down where you're playing Tampa, which you're concerned about. So yes. you got to be wary. You got to be very wary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Montreal, they're on a, they're on a quite the, quite the heater lately. I mean, Which I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you about them. They're one of the teams I wanted to touch on this week. You, you, the other, literally the other week, you said you'd given up on this team. I didn't show them any love. I didn't. You didn't show them any love. You just no. shat on them. I said did. it was over. I did. And I did. And and they've been on this incredible run here. What, I, what's yeah. going on in Montreal? Well, I can say this: Carey Price has been one of the best goalies in the in 2019, top three goalie in 2019. And uh, I I can't really say anything, but they're they're surprising me still. Like in the last couple of years, when I put my faith in them, they they shit on me. But now, I mean, they're just they're just proving me wrong right now. I mean, it it, it just seems like there's been an injection of character into this team that I just haven't seen in a long time, Nick. Like I I didn't <laughs> think. And and they were having trouble scoring in in quite recent, but not not this week, but the the previous week. And it just seems like they they just find ways to win. And we saw Niemi with that uh, really admirable admirable performance the other day. And it's just like, man, I don't know what I don't know what this team's capable of anymore, Nick. I I can't even give you an expert opinion on this team because I simply I don't know what's going on anymore. I I'm I'm. Fully serious. Like, obviously, I want them to win and all, but I don't know what I'm going to get from one day to the next. But all I know is Carey Price is firing on all cylinders, and uh, that is very, very good news for their chances of winning. And I and I can tell you that there are they're beating Columbus tonight. So wow. I don't know, man. Like, they are bringing me over to their side, and and. Give it if if they give me one more week of, of very positive play, I will be on this Montreal train all the way to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I'm 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 almost ready to jump on and say yes, they can confidently make it. But I, I don't I'm not not sure I'm quite there yet. Yeah, no, I I I to me it to me it makes sense. I I you know we talked about it last week. Did I like Islanders Montreal and and the third team? which was um, Buffalo. Buffalo. And I told you, I like Montreal Buffalo, and yeah. Islanders. Yeah. And the reason I like Montreal is they're different this year. They got the Colt Kinyemi kid, which kind of oh, solidifies boy. the center depth. For that the first the time, your day. centers look good. You got Domi, which changes things at the middle of the ice. The, the middle yeah. of the ice problem has been solved with those two guys. And then not to mention the healthy Shea Weber, who's mm-hmm. been great since his return. The healthy Carey Price, who's, who is as good as his heart trophy season looks that way lately since yeah. game one again since since that opener against toronto i said it this looks this looks like a new price we haven't seen in quite some time and and if all those factors stay put and you avoid some major injuries here in the last 35 games i don't see why this team doesn't make the playoffs there's just there's just too much character there too much experience well coached team i just i just I, I don't see them sliding but Drew Ann's on this team. They can't win with Drew Ann. Come on, Nick. Well, they can't. They can't win with Drew Ann, but they can certainly get in the playoffs oh, with the kid. Come on. They I mean, can, Tam- they can Tampa win. got pretty far with the kid, didn't they? They actually, he was one of their. They best got to players. a cup final. They got to a cup final. Yeah, he was one of their best players when 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 they did go on their run. I'm telling well, you. There you go. I just yeah. I mean, but 
fuck, he hasn't really, uh, he still hasn't impressed me much in the last couple of days, but still, I mean, man, that's exciting in Montreal, man. Oh man. I'm, uh, I'm pretty fired up for that, Nick. And, and, and even those pundits like Pierre, they, they've been saying, I was totally wrong about this team. Yeah. I, I was wrong to disrespect them. They, mm. I didn't, I did not have them in the playoffs and, and now look where they are. Yeah. So it, it, it is quite the story and Hey, this might be the craziest thing when you're talking about the Montreal Canadiens, but Mark Bergevin might be GM of the year. Oh, I was just might be that. GM of the year. He, man, oh, Mick, I, there's no GM. I'll put it. There's no GM that has turned his public opinion in such a way that he has. Like people were saying, bottom three GM, not even 365 days ago. And now the way things have gone this year, he's looking like a fucking genius. The Domi thing, the Kotkaniemi draft, the, you know, Nick Suzuki's turning out to be a good guy, like the, the Pacioretty trade. Fuck, this guy has just nailed it. He's just nailed so many things in the last year that uh, he's got to be up for that, that kind of debate. He's got to be. I can't it's, think it's of a, anyone else. Yeah, it's the great story. It's like he got hooked on cocaine, was sent to rehab, <laughs> got got his act together, got out free. Yeah. Uh, you know, he got out clean. He's been off for a long time, and, and now look where he is. So it, it's a good story, and uh, I, I applaud the guy. I, I really do. Jeff Molson is just handing him a, a whole whack of beer and just saying, yeah. just go do your thing. Like, just follow your heart, Mark. <laughs> and he's like... <laughs> thank you fuck and he just goes off so that's good that's good for montreal i mean if they win tonight it'll be really impressive because call uh columbus boy they're a hell of a team and hold on mm -hmm. to me yeah yeah that that's looking good but uh yeah nick that that's wonderful news from our part but uh, we have to make mention of of the colorado avalanche because we we do follow this team we, we like to keep track of them. They're very interesting. And uh, boy, oh boy, they've been on a fucking horrible run. As, as you made mention earlier, four, since the 4-1 loss to the Islanders on December 17th, they got only three wins since then. And uh, just a couple notes from this team here. Uh, Sam Gerrard has been statistically awful. One point since November 30th. That's bad. Uh, you got Tyson Jost, who just got sent down to the Colorado Eagles of the AHL. And uh, you've got Tyson Berry, who's, per who's the, the, the only defenseman performing statistically well. And uh, I think what we've seen, Nick, is this team has transformed into the only pure, 100% pure, one-line team in the NHL. You've got Carl Soderberg doing okay things. Kerfoot has not done much. And other than that, fuck, you got the best line in hockey and then fucking zero. And their goalies have taken a hot shit since then. What, what, I can't imagine. Now, I still think they're going to make the playoffs, but this is, this is bad news bears for this team. Yeah, I mean, hey, Kyle, you called it. You you thought they were going to go three and zero oh on this current road trip? Fuck! I and did. what and what happened? One and two. One and two. But they did beat you Toronto, against, which I didn't you, know. You, you, you lost to Montreal. You lost to Ottawa. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it, it, those are some bad. You don't want to lose to Ottawa. That's that's concerning. Nick, I got I got a question. Um, I got a question. I got I got a question. Here. So the team like. I like I just said, they're they're a true one line team, pure far and away one line team. Do you split up the boys? Do you just break it up? Do you throw Rantanen on the second line with whoever the hell is down there and just see what happens? Why are we not experimenting this more? Like, sure, I mean, it's it's the best line in hockey, but let's let's give it a go, you know? Like why not? You might spark that second line into a decent scoring line. Why can't we do that? Because I don't think they've been given the opportunity yet to do that and that they haven't made a deal yet to, to insulate the second line to make it better. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go that drastically down that road until they acquire somebody, put them in that second or third line, and see what happens. 
Then if you're not scoring, then maybe you break it up. But that line has been so explosive, unanimously the best line in the NHL this year. Yeah, I don't think you can play with it. I think you let the GM do his work. Let Joe Sack do his work. He's been a good GM in the past, has made some good deals. Get a guy who can help you out on the second line there and 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 see what happens. And and then you if you're Jared Bednar, you tool you you, you go into your toolbox and see what you can do with the lines. But mm-hmm. until you until you've been given the go ahead from the GM that you got a piece that you can use, I don't I don't think you do anything. And the key there is get a guy, right? Like are they ready to part ways with a Tyson Berry? Because we know we've got Kale McCarr waiting in the wings. Do we is it the right time either at the trade deadline or at the very least this summer to move this guy? And I, I listen to the, the BSN Avalanche podcast quite a bit. They do a daily, a daily, fuck, that's, that's a lot of commitment, a daily Avalanche podcast. And they're, they're on board with this, Nick. They, they're they're kind of saying, well, let's, you know, let's move on from Barry. I mean, he's pretty big factor on the power play, but perhaps he shouldn't be as big as he is there. And he's just got a ton of value right now. Uh, and fuck, if you got a, a decent top six forward, I think the complexion of this team changes quite a lot, wouldn't you say? I, I think it's almost as analogous to the Leafs conversation we just had. The Leafs yeah. need a defenseman just as bad as this team needs a forward. Yeah. So I, I think that's that's fair. That's very fair. And and again, when you look at teams in the next six weeks who have to make something happen, I think Colorado's in the in the top like five, three to five teams that need to, that need to to really make a move here. So I think Joe Sackick is now Kyle. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about another GM who's under a lot of pressure? Would it be Peter Shirelli? It would be Peter Shirelli. Ooh. Everybody's favorite Ooh. boy. Everyone's favorite guy to beat up on. Is that the Peter hottest Shirelli. seat? Is that the hottest seat in the NHL oh, right now? Oh, it's got to be the hottest seat in the NHL. Guy's a this fucking is from... clown. This guy's a clown, Nick. <laughs> this is the worst general manager in the history of the NHL. This guy Pretty grew bad. up on NHL 07, be a GM all day long, and it wasn't <laughs> even that advanced at that point. Like, I'm yeah. sure I could do a better job than him twice over. I'm not, you know what they turned Jordan Eberly into? Fucking Ryan Spooner, and they want to get rid of him too. They turned right. Eberly into Ryan Spooner. They got rid of Hall. Like, you guys are fucking retarded. You've had four first overall picks. I, uh, fuck. My, my friend Connor McDavid and I, we, we were talking about it on the ice. We said, this guy's an idiot, and uh, we got to get rid of him. So, you know what? Part of, me, part of me wishes that this hot seat gets even hotter, and he's fucking canned. Like, get this guy out of here. What, what is going on? Like, how can this management group, this ownership group, sorry, put up with this shit any longer? Like, we all know it. Everyone in the entire league and the media and office spaces and water coolers and construction sites are all saying this guy's a moron. Can we please get rid of this guy? He's talking about playing his first rounder, putting his first rounder in play. He's talking about dealing Pugliarvi. Like, this is, uh, this is dumbass one-on-one in my opinion. Well, the tweet was great. And this is from Ryan Rashad. TSN Oilers organization is on a full court press <laughs> to find to find help at forward scouts and staff deployed on mass. <laughs> Everybody go <laughs> go go go! Like, like, yeah, exactly. Like hop on this plane. You're going to Arizona. <laughs> you're going to Toronto. You're going to Calgary. <laughs> like, boy oh Jeez, boy, would it be shit. fun to be one of those scouts? Oh, my God. I, no, you know what, Nick? I don't think it would be fun. I think you'd be under so much pressure. Like <laughs> like he says, get to, get to fucking New York right now and get yeah, back yeah. to me in a day. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. oh okay. And then he goes, what did you see? <laughs> what did you see out there? Oh, uh, Mika Zibanejad's okay. No, we can't afford him. You're fired. Like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. tense. It's tense. But noticed. again, they, they got to do something because Connor, you, you know, Connor's having his say, your good buddy who you met at the rink. He's probably, you know, pressing some buttons and saying, I want to move done here because I signed long term and I want to I want to have some playoff runs in this city. They Absolutely. just got the new arena. 
the fans want a playoff run, especially after the disappointment see the disappointing season last year. Um, a lot of pressure there. We just talked about Toronto, Colorado. I think this one is definitely the the cherry on top of the cake, right? I'm just worried, Nick, that uh, after all this time and the fans have been so tortured and patient that uh, things things haven't unfolded right. And I don't think any sort of deal, even if it involves a first rounder or a pull Yarvi, will will fix this team as fundamentally as it needs to be fixed. Like this, I'm worried that he's going to pull a deal to save his job and uh, and to maybe win a round, maybe win one round. But if you're thinking that this team can go up against like uh, Nashville, Winnipeg, uh, even even Vegas, I- I'm I'm concerned. I'm concerned. And I think that, that first rounder is going to hold a lot of value this year. If, especially if they don't make it because it's a pretty decent draft year. And then you talk about giving up on uh, Pooley Arvey so early. Talk about mismanagement of a, of a young guy. Like this, like what are you doing right now? He's on your fourth line, and what's he doing there? I have no fucking idea. Can you just put him in the AHL and let him find some traction maybe? Why is he on your fourth line? I have no idea in the history of the NHL, why you'd put like a, a 19, 20 year old making like eight minutes a night, like, like what they did with Drew Ann. You remember how, how pissed I was. Drew Ann's playing 10 minutes a night on your fourth line, not putting up any points. Well, go figure guy, just get him some fucking ice time and stop mismanaging your assets. The, the funniest thing about this team is the thing they need the most. And they're, they're wealthy at center. I'm they're wealthy at center. They need wingers, like good wingers. And what do you know? It's the most obtainable commodity in the entire fucking NHL. And, and he still can't get that right. Like, how do you not get that right? Wingers are the easiest thing to find and develop in the entire history of the NHL. And he can't even get that. I don't get it. Yeah, very true. It's not like defense where, you know, you had, you had all those are a centerman. Or right. where you had, you know, GMs like Bergevin saying, hey, I can't get a center. It's just really hard to get a center. Yeah, but th- and- this guy, he's got the market open. It's a, it's a, it's a buyer's market if, if you're looking for a winger. And, and you're absolutely right. Has not been able to find the right pieces. Uh, he's got guys like who, that, that, that Indian guy, Ka- Kyra. Kyra. And he's on the second line. He's, he's playing with McDavid. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, it's, it's ridiculous. And uh, it, it's just, it's, it's, it, yeah, you're right. It's not good. Thank God uh, for Chase on. Yeah. I mean, like I said, the only good move he's done is, is get the coach in there. I, I've liked the Hitchcock. I told you I, I've always been on that bandwagon from the start. Shmeh. But, but again, it, it shows the desperation because you're getting a guy who, who is there to get them into the playoffs. He's not there for a rebuild. He's going to press a lot of buttons. He's mm. not going to make a lot of friends. The players aren't going to like him. Um, we know we've, there's been history of, of, of players just selling out on the coach um, when his message has gotten very boring. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that might happen in Edmonton. Who knows? But, yeah. but right now they're right in the thick of things because, you know, teams like Colorado have been struggling. Teams like Anaheim have struggled oh, yeah. enormously. Yeah. And, 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 and then that's why they're still there. So it's going to be very mm-hmm. interesting to see what they do. And in a, in a way, I think it's unfortunate that they haven't folded the season yet because I, I don't think this is the year. But uh, at, at the end of the day, it's the age-old saying they're going to go as far as Connor will take them. And, if it, and I think he has the capability as a player, as an MVP, to, to get them into that bubble playoff spot, especially if all the other guys pull a little bit of weight. I just don't think it's a, it's a good... It's a good thing this year. I'm telling you, like I, I'm worried about this team, and I I hope Shirelli gets the fire uh, sooner rather than later. But uh, God damn, if they trade that first, I'm uh, I'm checking out. I'm because ch- I you know I I like Edmonton. I I follow them, and I want them to do well. And I have for many years. If they trade this first rounder, I'm checking out. I'm done. I'm done. And there you have it, folks, for episode 23. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and see you next week.